Welcome guys, I, uh, I'm very glad that you are here tonight. Uh, I'm glad you put your time aside for this uh, week's English live program. Um, there are many things waiting for you. Um, songs, uh, a word of God, uh, a motivation, prayer, and especially starting from this month, there's a special topic that will start um, tonight. Uh, I want you to get ready. I want you to get your hearts ready to uh, worship the Lord, to worship God. Um, and God is there with you. Even though you miss church, I know you do. I miss church as well, being all together. Um, but it says in the Bible, where there are two or more um, gathered in my name, I am there and, and he is present with you. Um, I want you to get ready for uh for you to sing along with us. I want you to pray with us and um, let your heart um, be God's. Let everything aside um, and just get ready to worship God. Amen.
crossed my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my savior on that cursed tree his body bound and drenched in tears they lay down in joseph's wound the entrance seat by heavy stone
Why trust God? I'd like to open to Isaiah 41 verse 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Clearly here God is telling us that he will help us. He is with us and he is our God. But if we look um, at the end of the chapter, in verse 28 and 29, God tells us, I look there, but there is no one, no one among the gods with a small g to give counsel, no one there to give answers when I ask them. See, they are false. Their deeds amount to nothing. Their, go their images are but wind and confusion. Here God is telling us that we cannot put trust in other gods, any other gods, idols, or whatever they may be. They cannot provide us with solutions to our problems or answer our questions or give counsel. Only God can do this. God promises to fight for you. He's our ref refuge in troubled times and he even has plans for you. But above all, God keeps all his promises. All these promises God makes in the Bible and throughout this chapter especially, I will strengthen you, I will help you, I am here with you. I will turn deserts into pools of water. I will make rivers flow on barren heights and springs within the valleys. All these promises God keeps. He keeps every single one of them and does not break them. So trust God. Nothing can lead you to victory, solve your problems or give answers to your deepest questions like God does. Only God can do this. If you think about it, when you're facing a problem and you want to get it off your mind, you might go and do something you like. You might uh, go bake something or go on a walk. And this may temporarily take the problem off your mind, but the problem will come back once you stop and it won't give you peace. It hasn't disappeared. However, God can solve your problems and answer your deepest questions. So trust him. He knows exactly what you need. God knows exactly what you need and he gives generously. So don't be afraid to ask him for anything. Trust him. If we take Jesus for example, um, we can see during his prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, he trusts his whole life in God's hands and tells God, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Jesus trusts God fully and he knows God's will is better. He knew God's will was better for him and that God would fulfill, fulfill this will. This is a perfect uh, illustration of trust. I encourage you to trust God in your prayers. Bring your problems and questions before God because he can answer them. He can solve your deepest problems. And God will fulfill the, the promises he has made towards you, the plans he has for you and the purpose he has for you. So trust him. Amen.
For you today we come with all our hearts with all our problems with all our thoughts and we just want to lay them before you we throw them all to you because we know that you are our God we know that you have the answers you have promises for us they're all laid out there in, in your book for us all we have to do is search for them look for them please we want more of you we want we need you right now all of us the youth the teens the children the adults the men the women Betania church needs you lord we are willing to stay at your disposal we want to do your will 
not ours. I know you will make great things. You have many promises for us. And you have many miracles, new things for us. All we have to do is stay at your disposal. When we are in problems, when we are in need, many times we look away from you because we think we can solve them. We think we know how to do better. We think this is the problem, we think too much. We need to look for you. We need you to solve our problems. We need you to come for and help us. We need you in everything that we do, in every day of our lives, in every second, in every minute. We need you, Lord, we need you. I know that you have the power to help us. I know that you have the power and you will do. You will lift us and you will lift those who are in need. Listen to our cries. Listen to our calls. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Amen. Resurrected King 
is resurrecting me by your spirit I will rise from the ashes of the praise will rise to Christ our King. What an amazing time to be in, in God's presence in worship. And we want to thank the worship team and we want to ask God to bless their family for the amazing work they do and for the fact that they lead us into worship every time, uh, every time we meet. Praise Lord for that. It's a new day and 
I'm so excited to be here, to be able to share a few words with you from God's word. As you can probably see, uh, the spring is almost here, um, trying to settle. And um, we can see that the, we can learn a lesson that the winter doesn't last forever. We can see the the plants, the, that the tree is bloom, and that's and that's good. We it gives us some good vibes, uh, positive vibes after a long period of, of quarantine and after a, a, a hard time. I know probably you're all uh, fed up with uh, quarantine, and um, I'm I'm sure most of you are fed up by staying home. But um, hold on a little bit more, because uh, we're nearly there. I believe that 2021 will be a different year uh, in all the aspects, and I pray God for that. Uh, I say that from different reason. Always springs brings new new beginnings, and today we'll start a new series of messages called Honoring God. Uh, I don't intend to teach you something tonight, uh, and I rather want all of us to learn something from the Word of God together. I pray that the Holy Spirit will penetrate your hearts and that the truth uh, will renew our, your thinking according to God's will. So on top of the list of um, the new series stands, we honor God when we care about each other. God created us to have relationships and we function as a body of Christ only through relationships. Why? Because it's part of God's plan for us. It's part of who we are as human beings. We relate in the same way the Trinity relates. And today I'm going to share a few words uh, about relationship, not about romantic relationships today. This will be another day. Uh, but just I want to talk uh, about the relationships within the body of Christ, our church, and specifically the caring aspects in a relationship, how much we care about each other within the youth generation. Obviously, this message is addressed to uh, youth, but it applies to the rest of the church and all the generation. Uh, I've personally seen a lot of care uh, within this pandemic, a lot of um, good people caring for each other, frontline workers, maybe na neighbors helping each other. But I also observed uh, people that don't care and choose not to care uh, about others, only about themselves. And this is, this is not good. I've seen people that lost, lost connections with, with each other and they simply don't care. Now our society has a little bit of stigma in like when it comes to care for each other, um, promotes kind of like superficial relationships um, only on the outside. And we also, we always hear this, this saying, this famous replica, mind your own business. I've noticed that especially within young, gener young generation, um, our society uh, promotes some awkward politeness. That means that basically when, when you see someone in trouble, don't ask or don't interfere too much in somebody's life because you'll be seen as rude and you'll get this answer, maybe most likely, mind your own business. Well, recent studies show that caring for others is good for our health as well. It's beneficial to our well-being. Giving support to others out of choice leads to reduced stress, increased happiness, and an increased sense of social connectedness. That's why my message came out from a burden that we should have when it comes to care about each other, especially within the young generation. Well, in church, it shouldn't be like that. Our relationships shouldn't be superficial. We have to care for each other. And my heart goes to the body of Christ. And I'm asking myself, and also you can ask yourself, how much do I personally care about my brothers and sister from the body of Christ? Do I really care or I'm happy that everything is fine with me and I can go on with life like that? And I have a really important question that I want you to meditate on. 
tonight. What makes our relationships with, within Christians different from those in our society? Well, one of the main answer is the fact that we live in a body, the body of Christ, and that makes the difference. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 says, the human body has many parts, but the many parts make up the whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. We as, we as Christian are a body and we can function only to the blood of Jesus. And that's still running for more than, more than 2000 years. It's present, but we cannot function um, only together, only stick together. Um, you probably know that our human body has this auto protective reflex response that prevents the body from getting uh, big injuries, like it's a, re a protective reflex. So basically it means that the parts in our body care about each other. So imagine what will happen if the parts in our body wouldn't care. So for example, when, some, when a, 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 an object comes towards you to, to hit you, your hand wouldn't reflect and it will hit your head or whatever it hits you. How would we function if, if our body will function like that? I, we won't function properly. The quality in our relationship is measured by the level of care. The caring aspect that we show to each other, the fact that we care about each other. And this is demonstrated firstly by Christ on the cross not just a superficial care feeling, but one that never lets go and really cares about its friend. It cares to the point that it would sacrifice itself for the well-being of others. This care is deep and profound. And I invite you to look with me together in the Word of God and let's see from the Word of God example of people that cared about others so much and let's open open the bibles in acts chapter 12 and i'm sure you're familiar with uh peter's miraculous escape from prison so act chapter 12 verse 1 to 5 it was about this time that king herod arrested some who belonged to the church in, intending to persecute them he had james the brother of john put to death with sword when he saw that this met with approval among the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the festival of unleaved bread. After arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to be guarded by four squads of soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out of public trial after the Passover. So Peter was kept in prison, but this is a very, very uh, important aspect. But the church was earnestly praying to God for him. Now, what would happen and what would be the outcome if the church wouldn't care and wouldn't pray for Peter? I don't know. It, it probably would be a different one. Maybe Peter would still be in jail. I, I don't know, but what I, what I want to say with this example is that the church cared, cared for the fact that Peter was in prison and did something, prayed for Peter. So how much do we care for our brothers and sisters that are in prison in, spiritual, in, in a spiritual sense, uh, in the prison of sin and in shackles of addiction? Do we, do we really care for their lives? Do we, do we ever make any contact with them or we exclude them for, from our safe bubbles? We should follow the primary example of the church and at least pray for them. There's a lot of people within young generation that are suffering probably addiction. And we as a body, we have to care for each other. We have to care for them. We have to do something for them. Then let's have a look as well in Exodus chapter 32, verse nine to 11, and then verse 30 to 32. It's this, this story is about Moses and this is one of my favorite passages from the Bible. This man cared so much about his people that he would put, if you want to say, his eternity with God 
in between himself and the people. So let's see. Verse 9. Then the Lord said, I have seen how stubborn and rebellious these people are. Now leave me alone so my fierce anger can blaze against them. And I will destroy them. Then I will make you Moses into a great nation. But Moses tried to pacify the Lord his God. Oh Lord, he said, why are you so angry with your own people whom you brought from the land of Egypt with such great power and such strong hand? And verse 30, the next day Moses said to the people, you have committed a terrible sin, but I will go back up to the Lord on the mountain. Perhaps I will be able to obtain forgiveness for your sin. So Moses returned to the Lord and said, Oh, what a terrible sin these people have committed. They have made gods of gold for themselves. But now, if you will, only forgive their sin. But if not, erase my name from the record you have written. It is an extraordinary statement. And whenever I read it, I cannot understand how much care Moses had for his people, how much he cared, that he even put his name, he even wanted his name from, to, be, to be erased from the book of, of life, if you want to say, for the sake of his people. That is extreme care. That is, is amazing. Obviously, God doesn't ask us this, but this, this example showed that the people of God care for each other. And this is what God wants from us. Again, in the New Testament, in Romans chapter 9, verse 1 to 3, we see Paul here doing a similar statement. With Christ as my witness, I speak with utter truthfulness. My conscience and the Holy Spirit confirm it. My heart is filled with bitter and sorrow and undeeming grief for my people, my Jewish brothers and sisters. And watch out, check, check this out. I would be willing to be forever cursed, cut off from Christ, if that would save them. Extraordinary. Like amazing, amazing statement. Extraordinary. Like it's, it's, it's so much love that, that Paul had for his Jewish brother and sister. And this, this is amazing. This, this tells us that these people care. And then again, in, 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 in 2 Corinthians, uh, the verses verse 11 chapter 11 verses 28 and 29 paul says beside everything else i face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches who is weak and i do not feel weak who is led into sin and i do not inwardly burn well paul you have a lot of things to do why should you burn for for uh, others like why this so much care? Just because Paul had God's nature and God's nature and Christ's nature is care for each other. And ultimately we know that the ultimate example is uh, of care is Christ. And allow me to, if I can, paraphrase John uh, chapter 3 with 16. So it, it, it sounds like this. For God cared so much about the world that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Now, think for a moment. How much do we care about our youth brothers and sisters? How much passion? How much burden? This is what God wants us to do. Let's be sensi sensitive by the voice of God and, and let our heart be open to this message. And, and also, it's, it's, it's shocking to know that um, they're probably out, they're out there gang members that could take a bullet for the friend maybe at any time. But this is for a bad cause. And when it comes to us, the body of Christ, the church, it's sad that sometimes can, we can't even take the phone to check on our friends, not to mention taking a bullet. It's God wants us, God wants our relationship to be more deeper, more, more caring. We're not just here on our own. We, we're, we're part of a body and, and it's important to care for each other. And then also the second truth is that we share a testimony when we care. We honor God when we care. In John chapter 13, verse 35. So now I, now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other 
just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. The level of care and love that we have for each other should trigger others to follow our example and ultimately follow Christ. God will be praised and honored by a caring attitude. And then I want to give you now a, a, an illustration and I hope if you didn't pay attention to my message, at least you will remember this um, illustration. Um, how much, how do we know if we really care? Let's, let's follow this path and I will demonstrate you something um, interesting. So I have here two pieces of wood, right? So this is a piece of wood and this is a piece of wood. But if you put them together like that, it becomes a cross. So this is the message of cross. God came and Christ restored our relationship with God vertically, God, human, and is still restoring our relationship with each other. So this is the complete message of, of, of the Bible, God, human, and each other. We cannot function um, as a whole without this. Uh, this is the message of Christianity. We can, this is the, the, the complete message of, of gospel. So you can, we can't say, oh, well, I love God, but I don't care about each other because you're a simple vertical uh, piece of wood. Uh, that's, that's, that's the cross, you know. That's the message of the cross. God, knowing God, makes us to care for each other. It's amazing. Even if you want, even our bodies, like our design, like if we, if we, if we stretch our hands, like... We can reach each other. We can grab each other's hands. That's, that's the way we were designed, to care for each other. And also the, great, the greatest commandment is love God and care about people. We can't say that we love God and if we don't care about others. This is just hypocrisy. We cannot do that. This is not the message of the Bible. Our level of care should be deeper and our attitude should be a caring one. Now, we shouldn't get upset if in between ourselves, in the body of Christ, somebody asks you, hey, I haven't seen you for a while. Uh, maybe I haven't seen you online on, on, on the church program. Are you okay? Something wrong with you? Uh, the society probably has a different option, opinion on how much should we care. Be polite, don't interfere. Maybe it's rude to ask somebody. Maybe they have their own problems. Well, this is not the case in, in, in Christ's body. We are all children of God and we care too much not to interfere where somebody is dying. Imagine yourself walking somewhere on the street and, and you, you see some, somebody that is, you see a house that is burning and you won't interfere. You won't even pick up the phone to call the fire brigade. And this is, is, is really mind blowing, you know? Sadly, sometimes we are prone to this attitude, but God speaks to us today. We, we shouldn't be like that. Our relationship shouldn't be deeper. I shouldn't be upset if, if you come and ask me, Paul, I haven't seen you for, for ages. How are you? How's your life? This is what God wants us to do, to care for each other. I care so much about you that I wouldn't let go of you when I see you struggling. And yes, I probably would interfere sometimes. And sometimes I would ask questions because I care about you and I want to help you. I want to follow Christ's example. You shouldn't be upset on me about that, on, on other. This is the way we should function as a society. So we have our relationships in church, but now with, the, with this pandemic, the physical church, the, the building, we cannot meet at the moment, but we're, we are a church in, in the spirit. So we shouldn't forget that. We should contact each other. We should ring each other. We should uh, text each other. If you, if you, if you didn't hear from somebody for a while or you, you know somebody is struggling with addiction, pick up that phone and give him an encouragement. Show that you care. Now, I'm about to finish this message and this message is just new info new information if we're not willing to change. And I have a challenge for you. Uh, 
uh, pick up that phone and contact one person, one person that you think needs help and show that person that you care. Pray with them. Do something for the kingdom. Let's show that we care. This is the message of the gospel. This is how we function as a body. Let's be deeper in our relationship. Let's follow Christ's example and show care in all aspects that we do. And let's show the world that we care for each other because only that way they will see our good examples and they will come to Christ. May God bless you all and may you have a wonderful week in God's presence. And please, if you, if you know when you see somebody struggling, please do something about that. Call each other, text each other, do something because we are a body in Christ and one day we'll all be together in the presence of God. May God bless you all. Amen.